It was almost like the last straw that broke the camel's back. Here she finds herself another year older. The meal is finished and she makes a dash to go to the temple to come before God. Her life is one of barrenness. She has no children, yet her husband has two wives. He loves her deeply, but the other one is over fertile, we could almost say, children coming out of her ears. And she teases the lady year in and year out. We find her here as we step into the story at the temple. The old priest is there looking on. And as she cries out to God, uh, the sobs, almost no words coming. The old priest thinks that she's maybe been drinking and finds this woman drunk. But the story is much more different than that. We step into the story in 1 Samuel, chapter 1, and down at verse 15. And it says, But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have neither drunk wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Here was Hannah, uh, in desperate need of talking to God, pleading with God. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman. For all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and fixation. It was the anxiety of the soul. Uh, a woman who was in deep need of talking to God about the situation that she was living in. Then Eli answered, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant you the petition that you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favour in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. A situation in First Samuel, uh, we find this lovely lady Hannah, troubled, troubled by this barrenness, troubled by uh, the, the marriage situation of her husband having two wives, and this other wife continually teasing her. And even though Elkanah, her husband, loves her deeply, loves her much more than the other wife. Uh, we find a situation where all she can do is desire to cry out to God. I want to think today about pleading with God, crying out to God and how God encourages us to come to him in prayer. In Luke chapter 18, there's two parables here. As Jesus talks, and it says in the first parable in Luke 18 and verse 1, it says, and he told them a parable to the effect that they ought to always to pray and not lose heart. The encouragement here for the believer is, and I don't know what situation you're in today, and, and, and the situation you may find yourself in, or I may find myself in, it doesn't mean if we come to pray that God always changes the situation or always answers our prayers with a yes. But clearly he has our best intentions. He, he is our good at heart. And he's working out the best for us and for his glory. Difficult though that may seem. And no doubt each of us have gone through situations where we have pleaded with God, cried out to God, and yet found the situation uh, so difficult to comprehend, to go through. The persistent widow in Luke 18, we find as he says in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there's a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but after he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. Now, of course, in the comparison here to God the righteous one. And will not God give justice to his elect who cry out to him night and day as we cry out for others maybe. There's, there's maybe in our hearts today that need to, to cry out to, for others and their situations, unjust situations as well. Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give you justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This encouragement to be persistent, not that our persistence, not that if we just keep hammering uh, the throne of heaven, that God will eventually say yes. But he loves to hear his children coming. 
just as a father who loves his children, loves to have them coming and speaking with him. And he understands the situation we're in and he works his way even through that situation in First Samuel. We'll find out in time how that moves on and how God uses that situation and even that barrenness and shows the love of that woman for God as she cries out to him. But maybe today you've never uh, been praying to God. You've never come before God earnestly because you don't know Christ. Or maybe today you find yourself backslidden or not in the place where you once were. There's a story here following the last uh, the second part of uh, Luke's Gospel. Luke 18 and verse 9 that says, And he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. This whole idea of self-righteousness. And treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, the religious, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I get. He was comparing himself to others. Maybe sometimes we find ourselves doing that, but we need to compare ourselves to the God who loves us, but yet is the God of perfection, the God where sin cannot reign. What did the tax collector say? But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Those seven words, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Pleading with God for mercy. Uh, pleading with God for forgiveness. I encourage you, if you've never done that, or if you need to do that today to come afresh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. But what of Hannah, as we leave the story today, and think of the words of that little hymn that says, Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I want to encourage you like Hannah as she rushed uh, to the temple to be with uh, God, to cry out before him, uh, to cry out for help. Uh, come today with whatever your cares, anxieties, worries are for yourself or for others or for a world that is lost around us. Whatever it is, bring it today to God. Come plead with him and he will hear our prayers. And he will love us and care for us and do what is right for us. What a wonderful God we have to come to. Thank you once again for listening.